Here we're gonna look at two trickier types of questions involving absolute values. So let's jump into the first example. We have the absolute value of 2x minus one equals three times the absolute value of four minus eight x minus 12. So what I wanna notice here is we've got two types of objects within the absolute value. We have that two x minus one, and then we also have that four minus eight x. So our first strategy, whenever we see two types of objects within absolute values, is to try to make them look the same. And generally we can do that by taking a common factor out of one of them. So notice there's a common factor of four in this, and in fact there's a common factor of negative four. That'll change the sign so that it looks like that one over there. So maybe I'll put that just as an observation here. So what we wanna notice is that if we take four minus eight x, we can factor a minus four out and we're gonna be left with two x minus one. So taking the minus sign out will switch the order of subtraction and then taking the four out will obviously divide each of those numbers by four. But this is actually good news because notice that this two x minus one looks like this two x minus one. Great. Now the next thing that we wanna see is that we can take the absolute value of this thing and the absolute value will cancel this minus four. So that'll give us a positive four times the absolute value of two X minus one. So let's see what we've got here. We've got this four minus eight X in absolute values is equal to four times the absolute value of two X minus one. Okay, now let's use this operation to rewrite this original equation in an easier like format to solve. So I'm gonna leave this absolute value of two X minus one on the left-hand side of the equation. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, I have three times four, that'll be 12 times the absolute value of two X minus one. And again, that's from this observation in this line right above. Great, and now we're gonna have mi yeah, minus 12. Great. Now the next thing that we wanna do is think about this absolute value term. So in other words, this absolute value of two X minus one as being like its own variable. So we wanna move it around in one piece and combine like terms with it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and subtract 12 times the absolute value of 2x minus 1 from both sides. And let's see what we get. So we've got 1 times the absolute value of 2x minus 1 on the left-hand side. We're subtracting 12 of them. That's going to give us minus 11 times the absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals. Now we're going to have a minus 12 left over here because notice these guys cancel each other out. Now, again, we're trying to get this absolute value of two X minus one term by itself. So we can divide both sides of this equation by negative 11. And that's gonna give us the absolute value of two X minus one equals 12 over 11. So notice it's minus 12 over minus 11, but the minus signs cancel there. Okay, and now we can use the fact that whenever you have an absolute value like this, it's going to split into two equations with an or between them. So here we have two X minus one equals 12 over 11, or two X minus one equals negative 12 over 11. So that's from one of the rules that we talked about in class. Okay, so next we'll add one to both sides here. So plus one, plus one, and now maybe we wanna think in our minds that one is the same thing as 11 over 11, so that we have a common denominator. So we're really we're adding 11 over 11 here. That's gonna give us two X equals, so 23 over 11, which tells us that X equals 23 over 22, after dividing by two there. So that would be one of our solutions. And now we're adding one here, so adding 11 over 11 again. So notice that's gonna give us um, negative one over 11. So we have two X equals negative one by 11. But then dividing both sides by two, we'll get X equals negative one over 22. And so that is our other solution, and we've got an or between those. 
So these two numbers, 23 over 22 and negative one over 22, are the two solutions to this original equation. Okay, so now let's move on to this next one. So notice we've got two types of objects and absolute values here again, just like this. Except these objects don't look the same and they don't have some sort of common factor that you can take out of one of them to make them look the same like we had right here. So we'll need to jump back to the definition of the absolute value in order to work this out. So let's maybe go ahead and recall the definition of the absolute value. So I'll say absolute value of, maybe I'll use a capital A here. So that's going to be equal to A if A is bigger than or equal to zero, and it's going to be equal to negative A if A is less than zero. <clears throat> Good. So really, this thing changes its identity, whether or not it's positive A or negative A, when A is equal to zero. In other words, when the stuff inside of the absolute value is equal to zero. So that tells us that important points for solving this equation occur when the stuff inside these absolute values equals zero. So maybe let's go ahead and write that down. So important points occur when 3x plus 6 equals zero and when x minus one equals zero. So notice these are not the solutions. These are just important points along um, for solving this equation. Notice if three plus x is bigger than zero, then absolute value of three x plus six is gonna be three x plus six. But if three x plus six is less than zero, then the absolute value will be the negative of that. And likewise for this x minus one. But if we find out where there are zero, we find out the spot where it switches over. Okay, so uh, notice that these are fairly simple to solve. We have x equals negative two, so we move the six over and then divide by three, and then here we have x equals one. So x equals negative two and x equals one are important points here. And that naturally breaks this number line up into three pieces, where those pieces are cuts at x equals negative two and x equals one. So let's maybe go ahead and look, this is x, equals negative two. Well, maybe we'll just put negative two here, and then this is negative one here. Great. And now, what I wanna notice is if we are to the left of negative two, then three x plus six is less than zero, but that means that the absolute value of three x plus six equals negative the absolute value, sorry, negative three x plus six because the interior of that absolute value is negative there. So that's something important to notice. And then also, if you're to the left of negative two, the interior of this absolute value is also negative, which means the absolute value of x minus one equals negative x minus one. Okay, and then similarly here, if you're between negative two and one, that should have been a one, then three x plus six is gonna be positive, which means the absolute value of three x plus six is just plain old three x plus six. But then the absolute value of x minus one is still negative x minus one, because x minus one is negative there. And then finally, over here to the right of one, the absolute value of three x plus six will be equal to three x plus six because the inside is positive. And the absolute value of x minus one will be equal to x minus one, again, because the interior there is positive. So the idea is we want to consider these three regions and solve the equation on these three regions separately, given the definition of the absolute value on each of these regions. So let's do that. So maybe we'll write it like this. So case number one, and so this would be x is less than or equal to negative two. Good. So notice if x is less than or equal to negative two, each of these absolute value terms can be replaced with the negative without the absolute value. So that means our equation becomes negative 3x plus 6 minus x minus 1 equals 10.
Again, absolute value of 3x plus 6 is negative 3x plus 6 here because of the absolute value structure. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. So notice on the left-hand side of the equation, we will have negative 4x, and then we'll have negative 6 plus 1, so that will be um, negative 5 equals 10. So that's going to give us negative 4x equals 15. But that is going to give us x equals negative 15 over 4. So great, we've got a solution. It's negative 15 over 4. And now we have to check, is negative 15 over 4 less than 2? Like, is it in the correct region? And it is. So this checks out as a solution. We can keep this one. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead into case 2. So for case 2, we're going to be between negative 2 and 1. So we'll write it like this. Negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So in this region, the absolute value of 3x plus 6 is positive 3x plus 6, but the absolute value of x minus 1 is negative x minus 1. So that's how we'll change the equation here. So we'll have 3x plus 6 minus x minus 1 equals 10. Again, I replaced absolute value of 3x plus 6 with itself and absolute value of x minus 1 with its negative. Great. And now let's see what we get. We're going to have 3x minus x. That's going to give us 2x. And then we'll have 6 plus 1, so that gives us 7. I'm going to go ahead and move that to the other side of the equation. 10 minus 7 is 3, so we have 2x equals 3. So notice that is going to tell us that x equals 3 over 2. So now it looks like we might have another solution, so I'll box this in purple, but we want to go ahead and check if this solution we have found is within these bounds of this case, of this case 2. But it's not. Notice 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. That is outside of this region right here. So that means this is not a solution. We have to throw it away. Okay, so now let's move on to the third case. So case number three, and that is if x is bigger than or equal to one. So in that case, the interior of each absolute value is positive, which means you can just delete the absolute values without thinking. And that'll give us 3x plus 6 plus x minus 1 equals 10. So now let's go ahead and simplify that. We have 3x plus x, so that's going to be 4x. And then we have 6 minus 1 is 5. We're going to move that over and we'll get 4x equals 5. So that tells us that x equals 5 over 4. Now we want to go ahead and check to make sure that that works as a solution. But it does work as a solution because 5 over 4 is bigger than 1. So that means this is an appropriate solution because it's in the region that we were just like playing around in. So we got these two solutions. So x can be negative 15 over 4, and x can be 5 over 4. And that's a good place to stop.